Okay, the first thing we're going to compress is a snare drum track. Zoom in a little bit there. I like to use this classic compressor on snare drums and usually toms as well. Uh, it's a very basic compressor and it doesn't have any uh, visual representations other than uh, gain reduction light, which tells you when it's working. But it works well and it's easy to use. It comes with mixed crafts, so that may be why. I've gotten used to it and I like it. But the first thing I'm going to do here, let's play that track without the compressor. It's a snare drum. Now I'm going to change these so that I can set it up in front of you. So what I'm going to do is loop this and then I'm going to play the track and set up the compressor the way I like it and I'll explain to you what I did after I'm done. Okay, so that's kind of my go-to snare sound there for a compressor. And what I've done is I've set this up to where the snare drum sounds poppy. It's got that real poppy sound rather than a loose acoustic snare sound. And what's basically doing that is the attack. Um, you want to raise the attack on the snare drum. I've got it here to almost, it was about 8.5 milliseconds, almost 9 milliseconds, so that the compression doesn't start actually working, pulling back the sound of the drum until this period of time has gone by. So the first eight and a half milliseconds of that snare hit are going to be full volume, loud. And then it starts compressing. So you get that pop sound, you get that bang, and then it pulls down. Um, what's going on over here with the ratio is you're telling the compressor to be very aggressive by turning this way up. Aggressively pull that back. Don't don't go over here and be sort of nonchalant about the pulling the, the sound back to the threshold level. Be very aggressive, force it back. Um, the threshold, what that's doing is you're setting the level of the audio, well, you're setting at what point the compression starts working as compared with the level of the audio. So let's say that, that, that hit comes up to negative 24 or negative 20 on the, the level meter. Well, then we'll set this about right here, and then we'll pull it back some more to make sure we're getting every hit. So we're triggering at every hit by pulling it back here. So if you pull this way down, it's going to be compressing almost all the time, even if you're not hitting the snare drum. So if our level is here, we're going to pull it down to here. And some of these other compressor plugins are going to show you where the level is. Again, this one has no meters. So basically, you're just pulling that back until this gain reduction light comes on. Um, release, I've got that pulled down, what is that, 182 milliseconds, I guess, or 0.182 seconds, to make sure that the compressor sort of releases before the next hit. If I were to take this release and bring it all the way up to 10 seconds, then when the compressor kicks in because of this hit, it's also going to be affecting these and these all the way down here until it finally releases. So we want to keep that pretty low so that it releases before the next hit, especially in situations like this, because this particular hit, uh, this one even more so, We've got a light hit here and a heavy hit here. That means that if this release was way up, you're not going to get the attack out of this one because it's still going to be compressing from the previous hit. So we've got to pull that down. Hopefully you can hear the difference there. Okay, moving right along. Vocal. I like, no, I love this Fab Filter Pro C2 compressor for many reasons that I'm about to show you. But the first thing I'm going to do is play this vocal track without compression. Tequila Rose, 
Something about you drives them wild. Nobody knows. No one can see what's deep inside of you. Okay, so being human, she's very dynamic in here. Um, she's getting loud here. She's quiet here. And that is the purpose of the compressor, to come in and try to smooth that all out, even things out. And this Fab Filter compressor does an awesome job at what they call makeup, which is uh, as you compress more and more, your track's going to get quieter. Um, the makeup function is going to pull it back up. So you're not only pulling loud portions of her voice down to your chosen threshold, but you're also pulling quiet portions of her voice up to the chosen threshold. Um, any really good compressor will do that. This one does a great job. So the first thing I'm going to notice when I play this is these meters over here. Tequila rose, something okay, the green ones are the input, I assume. The red uh, level meter is showing how much it's pulling that vocal down to the chosen threshold. And then one of the things I love most about this plugin is what's happening here in the background. Check this out. Tequila rose, something about you. That red line is showing you the compression. Tequila it's showing you the compression that's happening. And then it's also this ghost representation, I guess, is showing you what it's pulling back up. Tequila rose, something about you drives them wild. Nobody knows. So it's pulling up these dips and it's pulling down the peaks. And it does such an awesome job. Let me show you something else here before we move on. The ratio, as you can see, we talked about ratio in the last one, but you can see actually what it's doing. This little corner here is called the knee. This uh, threshold will go up and down. And when we play the audio, Tequila. see that green line up in there? If I raise that way up, Tequila. it's barely going past that knee, so it's not getting compressed a lot. And you can see back there, Tequila. it's not a lot happening. But if we bring that way down, Tequila rose, something about you drive. You see that original audio, and then down there, the audio, the output, I guess. So, Tequila rose. That's about where I like it. And with vocals, as far as attack, I want zero or next to zero. And the reason is that if you have your attack up, say, eight, nine milliseconds like we did on a snare drum, you're going to get the first couple letters of a word when she's singing or your vocalist is singing is going to be louder than the rest of it. So let's say you use the word triumphant. Your TRI is going to be very loud and the rest of it is going to get pulled down because this attack is not happening until nine milliseconds after the uh, word starts to be spoken. Release with vocals, I like to keep that very high for portions such as this. Wow. She extended that word out, and as you can see, our compression gradually released that back up as she got quieter, and that is because I've got the release way up here. Moving on to bass guitar. Normally I use the Fab Filter Pro C2 on the bass guitar as well, but to keep things fresh here, I thought I'd use something else. So let's mess this all up. I don't know what that range is really doing for this, but play the track without the compression. <laughs> may notice we've got a lot of peaks here. Every time my fingers hit the strings pretty hard we get these little peaks. So that's one of the things this compressor is going to try to take care of. And also you notice when we hit a note and then let it ring, 
as it sustains out it gets quieter. That's another thing that the compressor will attempt to take care of. So I'm gonna play this, mess with it, and then explain what I did. <laughs> Okay, so what we've got going here, again, in the ratio, I like to be very aggressive with it. I don't like it to just sort of pull the audio back to the threshold level. I like it to absolutely pull it back to the threshold level. Um, the threshold I've pulled down uh, in relation to what I see the audio doing here, because I want it to always be in compression. I don't want it to be only compressing when there are peaks. Which is fine too if that's how you're mixing, but I I tend to do like this. So it's always being compressed. Makeup on this one is not automatic. It's going to happen uh, as you adjust it. So as you pull your threshold down and the track gets quieter, you can just pull that back up and make up for it. And again, I like my attack for a bass guitar to be zero or next to zero because if we've got it up a few milliseconds, then we're all we're doing is creating these peaks that we've already got. So I'm going to leave that way down. And my release, I like to be at least a half of a second, which is 500 milliseconds, um, so that when you're sustaining a note out, the compression stays on it. It doesn't release and then become the raw signal again. All right. And one of my new favorites, Piano. So, a couple of years ago, I guess it was a few years ago, 2015, I started recording this girl playing piano in a rock band, and I did not know how to compress piano. So I started looking through all my compressors for a preset, and this Hoffa IQ compressor had a preset, Piano, Set and Forget. And I listened to it on a piano track, and I thought, wow, yeah, that is perfect. So I said it, and I forgot about it. Um, so let's check out this piano without compression. Okay, and down here, where she starts playing a lot harder, let's listen to that. Okay, and then when I activate this compressor, I'm going to play this part. So you notice when she plays harder, it's not getting louder, because you can see that the, the representation here is showing you that it's pulling it down from zero, which is the threshold, the level of the audio. Uh, when she starts playing harder, harder, it doesn't get louder, but you get more of an attack. And that, again, is coming from the attack setting here being up about, I guess, 8 milliseconds is what that says. So the very first 8 milliseconds of her hit on that key are coming through at full volume. And then the compressor kicks in and pulls it back to your set threshold. And ratio, I, I didn't mess with it, but... You know, me, knowing myself and that I like high th ratios, let's take that up to about seven and a half and see what it does. Okay, that sounds the same other than a little more aggressive. And it works great back here when she's playing uh, quietly as well. trick that we can do to show how great these compressors are working I like to do this right click on a track in Mixcraft and mix to new audio track and what that is doing is creating a new audio track from this one with the compressor added right in it and I'm gonna that created a stereo track so I'm gonna just use the left channel to kinda show 
as you can see this one's a lot smoother this loud part doesn't really change here it's pretty much the same as the rest of it so it's all very smoothed out these peaks here are gone down here so that compressor is absolutely doing its job and if I were to do that with the rest of these they would they would show a similar outcome